Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. G'day listeners, welcome to the to Tradies in Business. Jeez, that was a struggle. Yeah, I almost forgot where I was then. <laughs> like, must be because it's Friday. <laughs> must be. And it's, oh no, it's not after 12 yet. It's pretty close though. It's very close. So the brain's about to turn off. Aren't we supposed to go to the pub now? Well, that's, I might. that's what I think people think we do. I think people think Tradies go to the pub mm. after 12 on a Friday. How many tradies actually go to the pub on a Friday afternoon anymore? Uh, my husband doesn't. None Does. of our boys used to. No. No, no I, I don't know many tradies that actually go to the pub on a Friday afternoon. It's just this persistent old bullshit idea that that's what happens. Plenty of pubs still have the um, warning. It is a Friday. Yeah. Titty yeah, girls. Well, this, is a, this is a fucking Friday episode after all. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I don't know. About the whole titty girl thing, but anyway. We were somewhere, I won't say, because it's a very stereotypical place. <laughs> and we'd walked into the pub to be greeted with a sign of trady hour, four to five on a Friday afternoon or whatever it was. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And they were titty girls. So, we walked straight back out. It's so not my kind of venue. Dead set, boobs out, serving beers. Mm. The girls weren't there. It was a Sunday. <laughs> but I, I, that just turns me off full stop. Not my kind of venue. Mm. Yeah, would you like some boobs with your beers, no, boys? No, thank you. No. <laughs> I just don't know. We've spoken about this on the podcast before. Yeah, we have. I don't understand the concept. Let's Full not, stop. Let's not talk about titty girls again today. Mm-mm. Especially because I want to have a rant about life insurance. Have you got your soapbox out? <clears throat> Much more exciting. Well, I'm usually standing on a box around here just to be a bit taller. Well, you don't have to when I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> it's the other way around. You can keep it for when you're with your wife yeah, instead. Yeah, exactly. Uh no, I, I posted a video uh, just recently about a friend of ours who, um, he's a tradie and he's also uh, a bit of a, not a gym junkie, but he does gymnastics and CrossFit and he's <clears throat> he's a young guy and he's into all that sort of stuff. Gymnastics? Yeah. Yeah, he actually coaches gymnastics as well as coaching CrossFit. That's fascinating. Um, and they do go together. CrossFit's got a lot of gymnastics elements to it. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, Anyway, he competed in a little local competition a couple of weekends ago and he has done some sort of horrible damage to his ankle, mm. uh, which is perfect timing because he, so he works with his dad um, mm-hmm. in their business and uh, they had just won a big contract <laughs> um, with, I think, uh, you know, Len Lease or one of the big primaries or something like that on mm-hmm. some civil works to do this huge amount of fencing along some new highway works that are going on. So, um, pretty shit timing, to be oh, honest. Just a little bit. And, uh, yeah, they just bought a new car for his wife. Um, they've not long moved into their fancy new house and he can't work. Oops. For an indeterminate period of time. So, Gosh, he's done a good job then. Yeah. So, uh, it's nothing broken, but soft tissue and they're still trying to figure out what's going on there. Anyway, he's on crutches, so mm-hmm. he definitely can't um, fence. So, they're, they're fences. Uh, and he doesn't have income protection insurance. This just blows my mind. <laughs> it uh, just doesn't make any... Why would you risk your family's security and not have insurance? Well, I don't... He doesn't do it knowingly. Mm. Sort of semi-defending him, <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to keep all this necessarily vague so that no one knows who it is. But um, yeah, I, I just I see this too. I, I'm I'm blown away at how many just people in general. Like you don't have to be a business owner, but anybody who earns an income that is a critical part of the household and doesn't have income protection insurance. I think you need a good slap around the head mm. uh, because I hope you and the builder have got... Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, As I'm about do. to hook in. <laughs> but if you're listening to this and you're like, what's income protection insurance? Mm. Then uh, I'm pretty sure we've chatted to some people on the show before about this sort of stuff. But 
it, it really, it, honestly, it shits me. Mm. Um, and particularly men. I'm, I'm going to point the finger at, at the men listening to this. If you don't have income protection insurance and you don't have a really good reason that you can't get it because some people might be excluded based on occupation or prior health issues, then I want to say, wake the fuck up and go talk to a life insurance broker Mm. or heaven forbid you even just go direct to your bank or an insurance company. Um, Go talk to your super fund Mm. because super funds by and large, particularly industry funds, can offer some sort of basic cover, which will pay you up to three quarters of your income um, if you can't work due to illness or injury. I have a similar story. <clears throat> Our real estate agent um, that we work with quite frequently did something to her back over the Christmas period and had, I think, almost four months off work with no income. Oh, jeez. And, and she's a single mum. Uh, had just ordered a brand new car, well, had not long moved into a new house, um, had previously been a high income earner, fortunately had income protection insurance because she was bedridden for almost four months and there was no, she was already out of the bracket to qualify for any kind of um, government mm. assistance, i.e. Yep. Centrelink. Yep. But she was really lucky, also lucky that she'd had a good six months before that. So her income that level that came in was quite fine and very adequate for what she needed to do. Mm. But she was able to rest and recover, get the support that she needed in the house because she had the income protection insurance. Yep. She was one of the lucky ones. No, one of the smart ones. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's mind blowing that, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, tradies have tool insurance, mm-hmm. most of them. Um, they insure their vehicles mm-hmm. and their house, no doubt, and not insure their income, which is the one thing that keeps everything rolling along. I think uh, time and time again I hear the excuse I can't afford it. Yeah, it's too expensive. <laughs> it's like, well, you try not having an income for three months yes. while your broken leg heals. Absolutely. And this stuff happens so easily. It's a flippant accident. Oh, my gosh. And that can be life-changing. And tradies are exposed to it, either on the work yeah, side. good point. You know, you, you smash your ankle when you tread on something mm-hmm. and roll it the wrong way or you slice your arm open on a sheet of tin or something mm-hmm. and, you know, cut a tendon and you can't hold the hammer mm. for a couple months. Um, or you're riding your dirt bike on the weekend with your mates, uh, as I've done a couple of times, and you snap your ankle. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Mm. Like you're off your feet for three months mm. on crutches. That that can be mm. catastrophic to a lot of tradies because, you know, they're sadly living hand to mouth or the business is so finely tuned as yes. far as cash flow and everything goes that if your production drops off because you can't work for six or eight or 12 weeks, that can be enough to kill a lot of trade businesses, sadly, Absolutely. but that's the reality of it, all for the sake of, you know, maybe a 1000 or 2000 $3,000 a year in what are generally tax-deductible mm. insurance premiums. You can't claim a tax deduction for any other insurance, mm. but you can for income protection, uh, and you get three quarters of your income paid. Provided, obviously, you've got to satisfy your claim and someone posted a horror story on our Facebook page and and I did reply back and say, you know, I'm sure there's horror stories about every industry, you know, car insurance, about, you know, plumbers, about accountants, about, uh, you know, brain surgeons and no doubt someone's had a razor blade in their food from Woolies once, but we don't all stop buying fucking groceries. No. So, you know, there's there's good policies and bad, but, you know, for for like a few grand a year to ensure your income in the likely event that as a male tradie, you're going to do something <laughs> stupid and hurt no, yourself. They wouldn't. Uh, so if you're listening to this and you go, ah, oh, that's not going to happen to me, just stop for a second. Do you know anyone who's ever injured themselves and couldn't work for more than four to six weeks? Just stop and think about that. Was it dirt biking, fishing, did they fall off a roof? Did they just get crook? Mm. Maybe they ended up in hospital with, I don't know, meningococcal or pneumonia or who knows what. 
do, do you know anyone that's ever had that happen to them? There's I reckon a few there'd light be a bulbs lot of people <laughs> who know someone, right? Well, that someone could be you. Mm. Um, I've personally claimed on my income protection twice in the last 10 years because, you know, dirt bikes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Two broken legs. And I don't even work on the tools. Mm. But I was able to get paid a an specific injury benefit. I didn't even have to serve a waiting period or anything. So, you know, it's... It's one of those things where I think if you don't at least go have a look at it and investigate it, then you're really putting your family at risk and you're being irresponsible. Um, And sticking your head in in the sand is a really shit way to deal with it Um, because, you know, like like our friend, they'll get through. He'll find a way to get through. You know, he's, he's increased his hours coaching at the gym and stuff, but I can tell you that money's nowhere near what he was making as a tradie. Um, his wife's under a bit of pressure now and, you know, they're going to have to look at ways to cut back and try and get through the next few months of essentially halving their household income. Mm. And I guess that's the other question that that we need to ask ourselves. It's like, okay, so I'm not going to have income protection because I think it's too expensive or it's stupid or I don't need it. It's never going to happen to me. But just think about how long could you survive on one income or if you're the sole breadwinner in Mm. the house. What are you going to do? How long could you survive without an income? How, I just, I don't know. I get a little bit frustrated. <laughs> I can't even talk. I get so frustrated. It's uh, That's the sums you have to do, I suppose. You have to sit down and have a look at the risk that you carry. And we all carry a bunch of risk just by driving or walking around the corner to pick something up. You could bend down in the shower like I did just several weeks ago and put your back out and not be able to work for weeks. Mm-hmm. How are you going to afford to pay the mortgage? How are you going to make the repayments on the ute? How are you going to pay for the kids' school fees or childcare fees? How are you going to put food on the table? If you don't have insurance but you have a, a large amount of savings, maybe you think that's okay. Do you really want to spend your savings on that? Mm. Isn't insurance still a better option? That's what I was thinking when you shared the story of the, your real estate agent. Mm. It's like, yeah, she got by because she'd had a good prior six months or something. Correct. But imagine if she'd also had income protection and still got paid three that quarters was, of her income. No, she had the income protection. That's ah, how she got paid. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But because so, she had a good six months prior, she got really good money for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're absolutely right. Do you want to take your savings away or do you mm. want to use the insurance that you can be paying for that isn't a big expense and, like you say, is tax deductible? Mm. It just, I really <laughs> just get frustrated There's, and can't find words. There's there's pretty much no excuse for not. There isn't. Even just having a basic policy in place. Mm. Like you don't have to have the, the ducks, guts, bells and whistles. Even if it just pays you for two years. Because mm. um, there's different rules with different policies and, you know, they have different costs. And one of the objections is, oh, but, you know, had to wait 60. I knew a guy and he had to wait two months, which is 60 day wait, mm. to get his money. And it's like, well, that was his choice when he took out the policy. He yes. could have had a 30 day wait. That's right. You could even have a 14 day wait mm-hmm. if you want to pay the extra premiums. So I guess this is another tangent in the same conversation. We recently, we thought we were well protected. We had some pretty standard cover. We just went with some big guys. Mm-hmm. I think we'd, maybe the first time around, we did it through the bank when we did our mortgage because mm-hmm. it was required as a. As a self-employed person yep we then went on did some research and did our own had pretty standard policy then we went we had an opportunity to sit down and have a chat with a broker and found out we weren't really covered for anything no and we had a long long wait and uh it wasn't going to pay for a long period of time if we had a significant injury like Mm -hmm. all the big red flags that we should have seen but even we didn't see Mm -hmm. so we sat with the broker went through what our requirements were what money we would need to put us in a great position if the builder died or I died, what would we need? Mm -hmm. Um, So that's the TPD part, total and permanent disability or death. Yeah, so there's death cover and TPD cover. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you you break your back and you end up in a wheelchair, Mm -hmm. you'll potentially get your total and permanent disability payment. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, if you die, that's pretty easy to prove. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Some of the others aren't so easy. Yeah, yeah. Because the hoops are so big. So that was one of our requirements where mm. in that event, we I know what our stress levels are like on a normal day-to-day basis. We have five children to take care of. I can't afford long waiting periods. I can't afford to have to jump through massive hoops. So for me, the luxury of being able to click through that process very quickly means I pay a little bit more each month and I'm happy to do that. Yeah. But 
sitting with the broker, we managed to understand what we weren't getting, what we needed to get, how to get it in place, and we got it in place. Mm. So now we're well, well, well insured. I don't need to worry if something happens to one of us, other than obviously the emotional and physical side effects. Yeah. But on a stress level, I don't need to be stressed about money. Yep. I'll have three quarters of my wage come in, which will be more than enough for us to survive. Sure, mm. it will still be prickly, won't be great, but it's better than nothing. And this is the mad thing. You know, lots of people have death cover, um, and certainly under your superannuation, often you'll have that as part of your super, um, as an automatic option that you've mm. selected when you took out your super fund or you know, joined an industry fund. But the crazy thing is most people don't actually die. <laughs> so uh, true. When they have accidents or get sick, mm-hmm. most people survive those things. Mm. And it has a massive impact on the household. Mm. And as you talk about, Coxie, with stress levels. Uh, and look, my wife's the same. She works for the government. And a lot of her colleagues are like, oh, but our super, you know, it, it pays for all this stuff. And we've got insurance under it. And I actually worked in the industry in a past life for a whole bunch of years as, a, as an insurance broker, a life insurance broker. And uh, and my wife and I do all our stuff through our broker now because mm. obviously I'm not licensed anymore. And, you know, the government, the, the cover under the government super fund, it's piss poor. Mm, that's hardly and surprising. And actually making it harder to get access mm. to your, your payout and they don't pay out for a whole bunch of stuff. So, like you said, with the, the bank mm. uh, policies, they're not always the best option and the beautiful thing about life insurance brokers is they don't charge, or well, most of them don't charge a fee still. Mm. They get paid by the insurance companies. Mm. Um, and, you know, a good broker will choose the right policy for you, not the one that pays them the most commission. Mm-hmm. Most of the commissions are the same across the board, no matter who they write your policy with. So why wouldn't you go see a broker when it costs you nothing other than, you know, an hour of your time and a cup of coffee to go find out, if you're covered, what you're covered for, what you're not covered for, maybe you can structure it within superannuation so that, you know, it saves you a little bit of cash flow mm. on the premiums and you can still get some good cover. You know, there's some cool stuff you can set up and it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. So on that, on the money, on that exact topic, when we went from the bank cover to the extensive cover, there was a significant difference between the two costs. And my initial thought was, holy moly, that's expensive. Am I being (laughs) sold the truth here or is I'm being pushed up the creek with no paddle? Until I sat down. So I needed proof, being me, and sat down and read some of these bits Mm -hmm. and pieces of the policy and learnt that that the broker was in fact right. What we had didn't cover anything. What Mm. we were going to have covered absolutely everything plus all the conveniences that I required. And then we structured it so that most of it, I can't remember which parts you can probably fill those blanks in, but most of it comes out of our super anyway. Mm. So I'm not out of pocket hugely on a month-to-month basis, but I know I'm really well covered. Yeah. And for self-employed people, uh, you can generally split it between – your super and personally paid mm. um, just because there's some tricky stuff with superannuation rules of whether you can access the money. You know, if you do end up in a wheelchair, you don't always satisfy the definition of being able to access your super. So, you know, there's some there's some things that you need to be aware of. And that again, that is why it's important you find yourself a really good broker, mm. someone you trust, someone who's got good experience that you can communicate well with. And then they can run you through all that sort of stuff and give you advice about what's the best way to set it all up because it's different for everybody. Um, it is different. And neither Coxie nor I are financial advisors or life insurance brokers. So mm-hmm. take everything we say with a grain of salt mm-hmm. and then go find a good broker. Yeah, don't ask us because <laughs> we're not going to help you, but go and find a good broker. And don't don't go to your bank. No. Because yeah. the bank's going to sell you whose policy? Theirs. <laughs> so if you want good advice... Go talk to someone who's not affiliated with a bank. Yes. Uh, Dig yourself through. I always say when I'm asked, because this is obviously a question we're asked often, and obviously we have some local contacts for ourselves that we use with mm. our clients, mm. but on a broader scale, I'm often messaged to ask, what do I do? Where do I find them? How do I find them? Mm-hmm. And I nearly always say to push through to the second page of Google mm. because those on the first page don't always have your best interest. And this is a blanket statement, please. Mm. I'm being probably a little bit controversial as usual, mm-hmm. but- The point of it is some of those smaller brokers or some of those smaller agencies are more likely to be aligned with your own personal beliefs and values, which is really important when we're talking about insurance and what happens if something happens to one of you. Totally. 
and balancing the cover with the premiums that you pay. Yes. It's no different to your car. Mm. You'd love to have an agreed value policy for what it costs to go buy a brand new one mm. so that if they write it off or some bugger steals it, you just get a brand new Ranger. Yeah. But the premiums for that are often horrendous. That's so right. So most of us go with a market value policy and we go for a bigger excess mm. so that if we do have to make a claim, yeah, we're going to be out of pocket an extra few hundred bucks, but it pulls our premiums down by mm. 50 bucks a month. All the same stuff applies mm. with life insurances. You have all those same options and decisions to make so that you get a good balance between being covered to the wazoo for two million bucks if you fall off your perch and you know, you're gonna be checking your cup of tea every morning to make sure the wife's not poisoning you <laughs> to claim on the big policy. Look out, builder. And uh, <laughs> and shelling out thousands of dollars a year for something that you hope you never claim on. Mm. Um, it's just about striking that balance. But yeah, I my personal belief is if you don't have income protection and you don't have a good reason, then you need to take a good hard look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, do you really give a shit about your family mm. and yourself? Tough but fair. Or just stay home, get some cotton wool, wrap it tightly <laughs> around yourself, gaffer tape it on. And just lay on the lounge room floor because then nothing will actually know because you'll die of diabetes and oh, sarcopenia or something. <laughs> something horrible. <laughs> like we just Boredom. Is that not the point? We are constantly faced with risk. There is no yeah. risk-free activity. Totally. You've got to then measure and balance and find the right alternative for you. Hmm. And some of that, one of the things that you just mentioned, you know, being insured for $2 million sounds fantastic, is expensive. What exactly do you need to be insured for? Yeah. That's one of the conversations you need to be having with your broker. Yep. Because my assumption of what we needed to be insured for was far more than what we actually needed to be insured for. So mm-hmm. when we pulled out all the bank statements and had a good look at what it is that we needed to cover if something happened to one of us, we mm. didn't need what I thought. Yep. Absolutely. So there you go. That's it. Wasn't really a rant, actually. It was more. No, it was very pleasant. I, I'm I'm pleading, pleading with you, as a listener to this podcast. If you earn an income, and you have any level of responsibility to anybody other than yourself, uh, so unless you're a hermit, then <laughs> for fuck's sake, go and sort out some income protection, even if it's a basic policy. Um, if you don't know where to find a good broker that can help you with that. Ask your accountant. They often have a relationship Absolutely. with financial planners. Um, you could ask your bookkeeper. Uh, you know, as a last resort, you could go to Google or something. But ask some of the other tradies in your network. Mm. Ask some of the, the successful business owners that you might be connected to or some of the primary contractors or whoever it is and just get a personal recommendation from someone. Yes, good advice. Um, because they'll be able to give you a name for sure. And if you're still stumped, get on to Coxie and I here at Tradies in Business. Mm -hmm. Um, Probably a good place you could ask is um, jump into the free group on Facebook, Tradies in Business. Uh, Join that group and you'll be able to get um, access to about 1,100 tradies Mm -hmm. in there. Um, So if you post a question, I I guarantee this will get (laughs) more opinions than I've had steak dinners. Yes. Uh, Hey, what what do you guys do for income protection? Um, You'll get all sorts of opinions, but I'm pretty sure you'll also get a few recommendations in there for brokers as well in your area. So, um, really, there's no excuse. None whatsoever. Don't be a wanker. Go get some insurance. Well, that was harsh. (laughs) You've moved past tough but fair into harsh. (laughs) Anyway, there's there's a fuck it Friday with a difference. Mm. Um, It was a bit preachy. Yeah, it is a bit preachy, but you know what? I just hate seeing people... Screw up their life because of uh, an ill-informed decision and inaction around something as simple as getting some cover for your income um, so that you take care of your family when you bust your leg multiple times. And that's the space we're talking from, right? It's how many times have we observed this happening, even to clients? Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. We should We should get like a life insurance brokerage. That would be an interesting conversation, <laughs> wouldn't it? Well, the number of people that we've seen screw this well, up. Well, that's true. Anyway, uh, that's it from us. As I say, go join the group. Go to that thing called Facebook. Um, They just paid a $7 billion fine. We're talking about this this morning. That's really not a lot of money to Facebook. That's pocket change for Mm. those guys. But go there anyway. Um, We love to hate Facebook and we hate to love them. So (laughs) go to Facebook groups, find tradies in business, join up if you haven't already and um, go ask the question in there. And you can also ask other questions like, you know, what's their favourite hammer drill or 
Um, we don't get a lot of tool questions. Which boots do they wear? We or? don't get a lot of boot questions. It's all businessy questions. They're very businessy. Could have something to do with our name. Maybe the tone. Tradies in business? <laughs> don't know. Just a thought. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Otherwise, have a fucking awesome Friday. Enjoy. Hooroo. Bye. You've been listening to the Tradies in Business podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business and other cool stuff at tradiesandbusiness.com.au.